Welcome back to the channel everyone. I know that this is a little bit un, un, uh, unorthodox where I've actually done two particular videos back to back but what I thought I'd do is do a little bit of a tutorial. Um, I have been asked recently about doing API coding and the approach towards API coding and different methods and one particular really common one is people using uh, Excel and then wanting to use it to uh, build uh, uh, variations, things like that where if you're doing calculation you may need to be able to be very specific in each iteration that you do and you want a bigger bit of freedom to be able to operate within Excel and then get SolidWorks to do what you want it to do as it's operating. I choose SolidWorks purely because I find the API behavior between SolidWorks, I mean between uh, this CAD system and Excel quite good. I, I do quite like it and I do think it's a little bit better then God forbid, but I do find it a little bit better than what Autodesk do. Um, just because I, I have this freedom, as with iPods, which I will do in the coming weeks, I find it a little bit restricted. But again, it comes down to your own preference. But before I wrap it on too much, let's crack on and get into what we're going to be here for today. So let me squeeze that right down and push myself right over here. Okay, so when we're doing this type of work, this is SolidWorks 2023. When you're wanting to do this type of work, what we'll do today is start with something really, really, really super, super simple. And we're going to start with uh, an Allen key. So all I'll do is I'm going to start. Now, when you're doing Allen keys, uh, this will be one that I'm just going to make up. So none of these dimensions will be realistic. But I'm going to go start and then I'm going to go sketch. Now, what you'll notice here, I'm not doing anything to do with API as of yet. I'm going to just track myself to a position here and here. This now is going to become my um, my Allen key geometry. And let's face it, most Allen keys do not have fixed elements, so you end up with a rad that sits there like that. Yes? Okay. So um, I think it would be quite nice to be able to control the radius and the head length and the body length. But first things first, let's get these actually named properly. Now you'll notice here, all it's got is R, right? Now you look over to the left, I've got D1 at sketch one. So what I'm gonna do at this, I'm gonna rename that, and I'm gonna call this rad. I click enter, and then nothing happens. Now all this means is that within my remit of what I've got here, if all I've gotta do is go down to my dimensions there, just to see that uh, rad has now been named actually onto my uh, uh, my drawing. So all I'm going to do here is come down to my body and you'll see there now D1 has been marked but I'm going to change that to body length bond body length and then okay. Now this is really good if, if anybody's used, used if anybody has a copy of KS Charles Engineering Mathematics you'll know that within there, it's, there's a lot of methodologies that use Excel. So you can actually have your active methods that you're uh, promoting within Excel and then use SolidWorks to gather up behind, if you know what I mean. Look at what you're doing, then use it to actually geo over, or give you an overall geometry. So all I'm doing now, though, is putting in something that's specifically controlled. So all I'll do is go head length, And then we go, okay. Now all, all I've done here is I've just really refined these key areas for that. And then um, I'm not doing too much specific sophistication here, but we do need a piece of geometry. Or else you do look and go, yeah, it's good, but there's no geometry. So we need a piece of geometry. So I'm just going to stick myself a, a just a, a polygon uh, onto here and then just, just put a, a key particular size onto that. I mean, as everybody will well know, you can choose whichever which way you want to go. I mean, for me, I'll just go, uh, let's go 18. And then um, what I will also do here is I will ensure that this is horizontal to make sure that there is some element of expertise that's sitting within it. So spin that bad boy around. Seems a little bit chunky, does that, but whatever. I'll click on here and then go sway, sweep, sweep, sweep. Body, length, length. It is too big. 
gonna yeah, it's gonna complain if it's too big. Okay, that's that's blowing up. I should have really damaged in that bet. So let's bring that down. Down. Let's just go to. Oh, let's go to ten. Uh, should be give you a little bit more to play with right now. So let's try that again. Here to here. There you go. And that's what I was after. Something like that. Just to give me what my Allen key was going to be. So I'll hide my plane. And then boom. We've got an Allen key to operate with. Now. Um, what I'll do first though. Is I'll just get myself into a nice orientation. I'm going to turn the sketch on that I want to see. Which is not that one. But this one. So I want to see the sketch. And then if I click it. I can actually see exactly what it is I'm going to operate with. Now. A few people do this many different ways, but I like to do it the old school way of doing this. And a lot of people go, mm, well, yeah, whatever. So I'll just, first things first, my recording pane. Click onto my recording pane. And now, uh, as we well know, the, the system now is recording each key strike or mouse stroke that I actually do. So all I'm going to do is double click into the sketch. And now all I do is click onto my body length. Let's change that to 120. And then let's change the head length to, I don't know, 32. And then just a completion, let's change rad to 8. And then come out of here and do an update. Right. And then stop. Don't do anything else. So we'll go body change. No, well, let's go. Uh, key change and then I'll go here and I'm going to go key change and all this does now is brings me this and uh, we've got a lot of keys we've got a lot of stuff that's going on here we do need to optimize this code we need to have a bit of an idea as to which way that all this is going to go and how we're going to actually do um, blah 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 how we are actually going to deal with this so first things first uh cosmos works short the short line of this solidworks simulation used to be called cosmos works and that is the activation process of it and it's going to add me extra problems going along so i'm going to get rid of that and let solidworks decide with that i i i, I don't really care it's not really something that i'm, I'm massively interested in the other thing is as well you'll know that we went to an edit sketch Mm. Uh, yeah, we're not doing that. <laughs> yeah, we're not doing that. Uh, when I come to here, you see on here, this is now referring to me selecting by uh, uh, on the screen. I'm going to set these to zero because I've actually got this as a reference to the actual piece. So I'm not too bothered. This is like a, a, an ultimate backup to say where I clicked on it and what it was that I clicked on. Um, because I've defined these within a name, it's globally known already. So I am not fussed at all. We are, we're in good stead to be able to do that. Um, the other thing that I would also like to do, whoops, whoops, it's, it's auto save. You know, we kind of go, don't, don't crash. So the other thing that I want to do as well is I want to stop it so that oh, I want to stop it so that there is a lot of changes going on. I, I don't want to mess around. So what I actually do is I bring in a piece that's called option explicit. And this is O-P-T-T-O-N option explicit. And what this will allow me to do is it will allow me to just apply something that I want to be instantly put onto it. And it, it doesn't mean that things will get paused or stopped or made difficult. Because dimensioning things by hand can lead to uh, errors and things stopping. So what I want to do is all I want to do simply is I want to jump in, change the dimension, and then jump back out again. So let's just, ch let's just try this out. So my first dimension here... It was 120, so I'll go 150. I'll bring this back to 35, and I'll make my rad again 10. So before anything, let's just give that a try. Uh, let's just stop this over, bring you over to here. And I'm just going to hit run. Okay, see how the option explicit came in like that? Now, the reason what I can do 
is because I'm on here, this may allow me, but I'm going to give it a go, this may allow me to even remove this sections out here as well. So I'm just going to comment them out for a moment and just see. Right, so this is with no uh, option there, so I'll just change that to 32, and then we should see a head change if this allows me to. So click OK. Now you see that change then? This is basically saying I don't need to go into the sketch. I don't need to change that sketch. So I'll just turn that sketch off. Sorry. So I don't need to change that sketch, which is pretty cool. So this means even still, by removing that, I'm even more optimized right now. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm actually in a good state. I've been able to do pretty much what I want to. So if I drop that down, I've got 30. Click again, and you'll see it drop down again. Uh, let's go 30. And you can see the overall thing changing in front of your eyes. So this is pretty good. We're in a great position right now. But who wants to click into what into Visual Studio Basic and mess around? Nobody wants to do that. So in this particular point now, what we'd like to do is to be able to export this, emigrate this, if you will, to Excel. So I'm going to open up my Excel uh, on a new on a new file. Bring you across to here. Now, um, what I'll do first is I'd like to set myself up with a little bit of a, an interface area. So what I'll do first is I'll call this uh, body length. This does not have to be spelt or um, this is not case sensitive to what it is that uh, will control this. Uh, this is just for your uh, or the user's uh, um, uh, happiness, if you will. And then rad. Rad really in the in the overall picture, the rad would really end up being controlled by a ratio of body length and head length, which we could do that quite easily anyway. But I'll do snap this in. Well, let's set this to a key dimension. So body length right now is 130. Uh, head length right now is 30. And then the rad is set to 10. So these are our three key uh, aspects of what it is that we're actually setting up. And... Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a command button. This is pretty cool. It's similar to uh, with this, all it is is it will uh, execute based on what it is that you want to do. Now, if you if you do have a note or a notebook or somewhere to take a note, write down C2. Well, we'll come back to this actually. So what I'm going to do is, is come along the top of the... Um, of the uh, feather and come to developer in developer here we have an overall of everything that we want to do and all I really want is a command button I want to be able to hit a button and it executes this over to SolidWorks and, and builds the part as I'm going through so all I'll do on this case I'll go insert and I'll come down to now you see here where it goes button uh, form for control now this is a way to actually build in a button and you can actually have a button to uh, activate within the system. In this case, if you've already got a little bit of backbone as to what this you, you want this to do, what we're going to do is an ActiveX command button. This means that when I hit it, it will try and do something. So I'm going to click it and then beneath here, I'm just going to extend here. So what I'd like to do is rename this and call this uh, build button. So I'll just call it build. Right down a little bit, right down. And uh, format controls, let's have a look what it's actually called. Edit, there we go. I'm gonna call that build. Simply that. Okay. So now what I need this to do is to, I need to turn this on. So I'm going to double click it. What you'll notice happens is this happens. We've now got a build click button here. That was from me double click and it's coming to this sheet here. So what I'm going to do at this point, you'll notice that the other length change is actually recorded from the other side. But uh, don't be fooled by this. What I'm going to do is I'd like to emigrate across everything I've got here into here. 
but I'm just going to go steady away. So I'm going to copy everything between, that's just above the end sub, right through to set SOLIDWORKS application here. So I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste. Okay, so do not rush into anything just yet. So now what we've got is we've now emigrated the two across. And I'm just going to remove that out completely, actually, else that's going to get confusing. And uh, what I'd now like to do is just come back in, snap that in. I do need to really put comments on, but we're making so much progress right now, I don't want to actually uh, stop. Now, the other thing that I need is this system needs to understand what in the hell SolidWorks.app is and what the part is. So I'm just going to drag these two as well. So I'm going to copy them and place them just beneath the sub private here, like that. This now should declare everything that we need to be active. However, this one needs updating. This is a, this only is applicable if we are the active piece. So think of it like this. If you're looking at the screen and you have two screens open, say that you've got two screens open, you're looking at the screen, this, the thing that you're looking at is your main application. The second screen could be your other part, so you need to get things from there to put it into your main application. But what you, if you think, we've gone to Excel. So what that means is as we're in Excel, we need to now get SolidWorks things and bring it across. So this declaration here set SWAPP application.solidworks, meaning make that the main part is actually untrue. So if we run this, it should just lead to a crash. In fact, it should, it's not it should, it will lead to a crash. So what we need to do is, because I'm going to leave that on there to remind myself, and uh, it's a good thing to do, because you remind it, you look back and go, I remember. Right. I'm going to use a command called get object. What this will do now is it will reach out and find things that are presently active for it. Now, see there it says path name. I actually leave the path name empty because SolidWorks is actually active. So I'm going to say SolidWorks dot application. Uh, for anybody who's, if anybody, <coughs> if anybody's unsure, uh, cat5 uh, dot application is Katia. So uh, the 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 key particular commands that we're looking at very very similar as we're going through very very similar. Now before we do anything, let's test this because it's all right. Going yeah, it's worked well, hasn't it? You kind of go did it though, did it. So I'm going to manually update these. Um, now that was taken across, so I'll just change one of these. So let's run it. There we go. See that? We had an update straight away. So that's that's positive. Now, what we'd like it to be though is we'd like it to actually come from the build here. So I'm going to snap this across. And uh, what I'm actually going to say at this point. Ah, sorry. What I'm actually going to say at this point is I'm going to delete here and I'm going to say uh, Excel dot range. And uh, I'll open an argument, open a uh, 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 quotation mark, and I'm going to go C2. C2, close that quotation mark, and then close that off. And then what I'm going to do is, because I'm going to be lazy, I'm going to copy and paste, and I'm going to go here. C3 and then I'm going to go here and I'm going to go whoops I'm going to go C4 so let's save that my goodness oh, I'll, I'll come back to that because I've, I've been saving other things. Right, so 
now what we've got is we've got this here. So what I'll do is I'll close this. Let's snap this over. And let's see if this is going to work. Um, I'll set my head to, well, let's go 60. It's, then it's blatantly silly. Right. Click on here. You go, hell, what's happened there? What the hell is going on? Okay. Now, um, this is actually coming. I, I know what's going on. But, <laughs> oh, no, I know, I know, I know. So, what I'm going to do is go back to my design mode and I'm going to click onto here and then I'm going to uh, double click. Double click. There we go. Now, don't forget um, values that are being placed in are all in meters. So, I'm going to divide all that out. Let's just go uh, divide by 1000. Uh, divide by 1000. And divide by a thousand. Close it out. Run it again. Oh, still in design mode. Come out, run it again. Zoom that in. Now let's go. We want a rad of five mil. Zoom that in. Oh, look at that. Now that's only coming. You you will get like this. You will get to a point where there will be a, there'll be a breach in the design. You see there? Okay, so let's bring that back to 30. Let's bring that to 100. And now what we have is, now that's one thing. If you look there, you see where it, it just it keeps changing and, and you're always having to zoom it in. What I'll do is I'm going to hit record. I'm going to hit zoom to fit. And I'm going to hit stop. And I just like these, I, I like these little bits to be done. You know, I'm in a, so if I just come back, I'm going to go to my domain and where is it? Where is it? Zoom to fit that little uh, bad boy right there. Bring it across to here. I'm going to go back to my design mode, double click into my actual object and right at the end, no matter what happens, it will always zoom to fit. And it's as simple as that. So then if I just close it out and then come out of design mode, come out of this and then let's do this again. So then what I'll do is I will go uh, 150 and then we're going to zoom to fit and then we go 50 zoom to fit and it's always going to zoom it to fit which is quite nice okay so that is using um, Excel in a, um, a, a, a nice principal way and what you can actually do is you can use SolidWorks to be able to help you um, really you can get SolidWorks to allow you to do variation of different sizes the more dimensions it doesn't matter but what it, it means is that if you're using something like Stroud or if you're using something like Bird to actually do your mechanics to do any theory or if you're doing exoskeletons which let's face it if you're not doing exoskeletons what else is there uh, um, then this is the way to do it. What this will allow you to do is grab key things, use other objects, and actually bring it in. Now, the interesting thing is, is you do not just have to use Excel. I personally use this on MATLAB, and this allows me to grab from, uh, I can do things on MATLAB, I can do my uh, quadratics on MATLAB, pull out key values from that, place that into SolidWorks, and it will build it for me. Um, I hope this has been useful. I hope this has been well worthwhile. I'll be dropping on more and more tutorials like this, short ones such as 25, 30 minute tutorials, taking you through key as aspect, key methods, key tones, and getting things looking pretty good. In the coming weeks, I will be covering more of I, uh, I parts as well, which is uh, inventor's version of what we've just done here. Other than that, I hope you've all found that this really useful, and have a great day, and I'll see you all soon.